Hey everyone, it's Maya McNulty. My friends call me the fundraising maverick because I maximize fundraising by thinking like an entrepreneur. Thanks for joining me. And this is a quick video on why every successful business uses this framework and uses a framework to have success. Now, you could have written a, a business plan, right? And chances are you're probably not going to go back to that business plan. I know I've written a couple and um, I have never once looked at them, even for the trajectory or for the, um, for the flow of the charts um, in a business plan. I mean, who does that, right? Maybe for the one percenters that are doing that, then kudos to you. But for me, I prefer to use a value ladder, just like every other successful business uses a value ladder to ascend their business and organization up so that they can see where the value is and where they could they need to tweak or where they can increase revenues. And so for a nonprofit, I want to share this with you just like it would work for a for-profit business, it's going to work for you as a nonprofit business as well. And structure gives you freedom. So if you have this structure, you'll be able to Unlike a business plan where you'd have to thumb through and figure out where's my profits coming from and how am I going to send to the next value, what other product, whatever, what other SKU, what am I going to use to be able to give more value so that I can charge more in my organization. So nonprofits use this model. It's been successful. I've been using it. Um, it's in the book Fundraising Secrets. I actually... Um, <clears throat> Uh, it's on secret two in the book and the value ladder helps to show you where the ascension model would be so that you can move up um, and show exactly where your profit like where it would increase and so just like a lead magnet for a for-profit business such as a dentist for example they would use a lead magnet would be a free teeth cleaning or um, uh, cosmetic surgery right so free teeth cleaning comes in and then they're saying to you, well, okay, get the free teeth cleaning and then you're going to have an x-ray with that. And the x-ray will reveal that you have a cavity and now they'll want to upsell you into getting that cavity fixed because clearly you don't want to lose your teeth and have junk fall in there and have a rotted tooth. So they're going to fix that for you. Once they fix that, they might notice that you have yellow teeth. Now, as they ascend you up the value ladder, they're charging you more and more and they're getting more dollars into their bottom line, but they're offering you value. So now you have yellow teeth. You don't want yellow teeth so you get cosmetic surgery to fix that then after that you realize oh well you've got crooked teeth so then you have Invisaligns or braces to straighten out those teeth and then after that they decide like you have these little speckles on your teeth and you don't want those little marks and grooves before after they buff it out so you say okay well I need teeth whitening so now they sell you the cosmetic surgery so just like a a nonprofit would <clears throat> have you go up through the value ladder it goes something like this so a volunteer comes in and this is a low ticket. Say we'll go like $1, $2, $3, $4, all right? So as you go up the value ladder, their cost and their contribution increases. As their contribution increases and they become part of your ecosystem, part of your congregation, they decide that um, maybe you see a stellar volunteer and you bring them up to being a steering committee. So their role increases their net worth and network also comes along with that and so the profits and the revenues that come into your organization actually increases as well because of the circle of influence so isn't that cool so as opposed to just a, a business plan a value ladder pinpoints you exactly where you are making the mo more money so a donor clearly brings in a little bit more sometimes you know status everyone loves status whether it be our ego or our pride um, we all love status so having them be an ambassador and your organization gives them more of a, a leverage so that they can go out there and help to rally more people to come and fight for your cause. So using this model also, uh, it's like little ninjas going out in the field and uh, helping you to be able to grow your organization. Isn't that cool? You guys getting this? All right. So, and as we move up and the donors, I'll, I'll be talking more about donors. I'll talk about that inside the master class and how to acquire them and a uh, little to no effort on your part and also corporate sponsors. And then as we get a little older, you know, board members, uh, they age out, right? So instead of just like in high school where you would become an alumni of your organization or in college where you'd be an alumni, this gives them the opportunity to be still engaged in your organization, but yet not have to have that full role. And so now they could see a key influencer or steering committee or someone that would really be a, uh, a really awesome part of your team. And this cycle would be rinsed and repeat throughout the organization just like a grocery store does a um, 
a uh, weekly flyer every week telling you to come in for five cent bananas, uh, five cent a pound bananas. Um, and then once you go through, they're sending you up the value ladder because chances are you're not just going to get bananas, right? You're going to add other uh, produce and meats and other things in the basket as you uh, go to the checkout. So it's the same model as you go through and, um, and send them up the value uh, value ladder. Are you guys getting this? All right, great. So if you want to learn more about uh, fundraising and, and fundraising mastery, I invite you to come to Fundraising Secrets Mastery on the 26th of March. It's going to be right here in Albany, New York. There'll be a link above or a link below for you to attend. I look forward to breaking this down for you and teaching you everything I know about fundraising, pulling back the curtains, and I'll also be signing you and gifting a copy of my book, Fundraising Secrets. Now, the value ladder is just one of four, one of four chambers that we talk about. And this um, is a model that I came up with because it really defines exactly how to be a successful business and a um, nonprofit as well, right? And nonprofits, you are a business. And so we have to start thinking and maximizing fundraising like an entrepreneur. And I'm more passionate about this as I speak to you about it every single day. So this is so cool. Um, there's four chambers. One is uh, building your dream team. Of course, we just talked about the value ladder and then uh, timelines and deadlines because structure gives you freedom. And then the last part of the quadrant is uh, successfully writing sponsorship ask and sponsorship campaigns, being creative with that. So I look forward to being your mentor and your teacher. Uh, come to Fundraising Secrets Mastery Live event. You'll see the link above or below. And I look forward to working with you. Have a great one, everyone. I'll see you on the inside.